What is up, people? My name is Shaka Fina, and I'm the coach of your lake here on Lanterns here in week seven of the GPL, and we are going up against Shattered Simis here and his team, the Tampa Bay Rayquazas. If you guys are excited for this battle video, please leave a like down below and subscribe, and also check out my Twitter page to be notified when I have future videos coming out. Uh, let's just take a look at his team really quick. He brought the Mandibuzz, the Licky Licky, the Jirachi, the Kiram, the Banat, and the Simisir. I'm very surprised not to see the Needle Queen, which is very good for me and my Heatran, because obviously Needle Queen with, with an Earth Power absolutely just bodies my Heatran. I don't want to deal with that. Also kind of surprised not to see the Thunderous, because that is very annoying, and it could have had some shenanigans with things like uh, Paralysis on my Scolipede and my Mega Altaria. So I'm surprised to see those two. I'm happy that they're not coming. Um... I know that he's probably going to have Earth Power on Kiram and Earthquake on the Licky Licky. And my plan, like I said in my draft video, by the not, not my draft video, but uh, my team builder video, which by the way, if you haven't seen that link, should be down below. I'm going to lead with my Heatran because I have Scarf Stealth Rocks on there. And if he leads with anything other than the Licky Licky and the Kiram, I'm going to lead Stealth Rocks and then switch out uh, on whatever he wants to bring in to bluff the fact that I might not be Scarf. So that's exactly what I do here is I lead Heatran. And he actually leads with the Kiram here, so I can't stay in. I know he's going to have the Earth Power. I have to switch out into my Ringo, which takes any special hit this thing wants to give me easily. As you see, that does hardly anything after leftovers. And he also takes a bit of Life Orb damage there, so that's a good amount of intel for us. We know he's not Scarfed. We know he's not uh, Specs as well. So that's good for us. Uh, is we just stay in here, because why not? We actually go for the Toxic. And he switches into the Mandibuzz. I don't exactly know why. To be honest with you, um, I wouldn't have wanted this thing toxic if I was him, but I'll take it. I like this thing being toxic. I want to wear down his walls as fast as possible and allow my big three sweepers to sweep later on. Uh, we get some more leftovers recovery there, and he goes for toxic here as well. That's fine. I have the uh, heal bell on my Umbreon as I go for a wish here just to scout what he wants to do. Now here I actually go for the heal bell on the switch uh, just to get rid of my status and I know I pretty much hard wall the uh, Mandibuzz right now because it toxic me and it switched out I don't think this thing has anything else for me other than the toxic so we're back to 100% no toxic on us he goes back into the Kiram I don't know if he was expecting a switch into maybe, maybe my Altaria because I had the type advantage against the Mandibuzz uh, but now I'm just free to go for toxic again as he goes for Draco Meteor doesn't even do half to us we're so bulky uh, and you see the life orb damage there again that plus the toxic damage is really going to wear this thing down pretty, pretty, pretty well. And I know he's going to switch out, so I just go for another wish here. As he sends in the Simis here. So I have a wish coming up. Uh, so I could switch into something on this and get all my health back if he decides to attack. But I'm thinking he might predict the switch because I know he probably has superpower. Uh, I know superpower will not knock me out at this range, though. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of calcing between turns here. It does, I think, 60% max so it'd get me down really 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 low but i'd be able to hit him with a foul play or a toxic and then get a lot of my health back with my wish anyway so i decide to just go ahead and go for the talk uh not the toxic i go for the foul play here expecting him to try and set up on me go for a setup move like i don't know if this thing gets swords dance or bulk up but i'd assume that maybe nasty plot uh and just go ahead and catch him with uh some damage here with the foul play was he actually decides to go for a substitute, so that's good for us because we can break this thing sub. And that tells us that he's also physically offensive, because I don't think especially offensive foul play would have been able to knock this thing sub out. So uh, that's good for us. And now we actually don't have a reason not to click foul play again. We are at 100% health. Uh, superpower crit wouldn't be able to knock us out. And that would also bring down his defense one stage because what superpower does. And since foul play works on his attack, we hit him with his attack stat, which is obviously physical at this point. Uh, hitting him on his lower defense stat and just straight up knock him out. Also, alternatively, if he wants to set up another sub, we can break that. And if he goes into something else, I get a little bit of damage on it with my foul play. Uh, not, not many things want to take that. The Bannet doesn't want to switch into that. It's super effective. The Jirachi doesn't want to switch into that because it's super effective. And Licky Licky doesn't want to take up Toxic on the following turn. So Ringo's just in the driver's seat at this point. As he goes for another sub on this turn. So we can break his sub again with the uh, foul play here. He gets his um, Salak Berry there to raise his speed. As you see there, Superpower actually does 60% there. 
as we knock him out with the foul play. So Umbreon picks out his uh, picks out his first kill of the match as he goes out into his Jirachi here. Uh, we cannot take an Iron Head, I don't believe, from this range, but uh, I decide to stay in here, to be honest with you, because I think this thing's Scarfed, just based on his team. He uh, Kyurem wasn't Scarfed, his Simmys here wasn't Scarfed. Uh, the other three mods are actually pretty slow, so I think he's going to have a Scarf Draji here. I'm expecting him to go for the U-turn, just to get some momentum on his side, because he really desperately needs momentum at this point. Uh, it's all with my Umbreon right now, so I actually just go ahead and stay in here, expecting the U-turn. As he goes for it, brings us now to 9 H or 9%, and we just go ahead and go for the Wish here on the following turn. He brings in his Kiram, and that's actually fine because this thing's gonna take more toxic damage it's gonna take more life orb damage uh the other thing we cannot do in here is stay in because we are so low from that u-turn that we will go down and umbreon still has some viability left in this match obviously a hard wall so many things on his team uh like this cure i'm gonna add a bit higher health and especially the amanda buzz like the amanda buzz can do nothing to me so we're gonna go ahead and switch out here into our vaporeon because we're bulky enough to live any hit and plus we get the wish from the umbreon so he actually goes for the ice beam which is fine. He might have been expecting my Altaria again. Uh, I don't know why. Or maybe the uh, the Chestnut as well, because it's super effective against Chestnut. But either way, we eat that uh, Ice Beam. We go back to full thanks to the Wish. I was actually hoping he'd go for the Draco there, because that would get us down to a point where... Well, it, because if he did this with the Draco, he'd be at half special attack, which means I don't know if he'd be able to drink, break our sub the next go around, or he'd be less likely to stay in on my substitute, and I can then baton pass that out to something else. So... Uh, that's not what happens, unfortunately, but he does take a decent amount of toxic damage here, especially after the life ward, putting him down below half. We're at full health. I know we can live any hit, especially a Draco Meteor, so I just decided to go for the substitute here because I know I have enough health to actually set up a sub. You see, we have barely enough health to do so. He's at half special attack. When I set up my sub, I'm down to 17%. Now, another Draco will break my sub. It'll also kill him, because Toxic plus Life Orb will do more than 18%. So, Kiram goes down this turn if he does not switch out. And if he does switch out to preserve his Kiram, we get a free Baton Pass into either our Altaria or our Scolipede to set up and just destroy his entire team. So, uh, he has a really hard thing, to, really hard play to make here. I just go for the Baton Pass, just because if he switches, then I win. And if he doesn't... His Kyurem goes down, so I might as well just send in something uh, on the switch anyway. So we decided to go for the Baton Pass as he just stays in and goes for the Draco. He made the right play there 100% as I go ahead and wish out into, or Baton Pass out into my Ringo just so I can get some more uh, leftover recovery and to let him watch him uh, watch his kill go down here with his Toxic. So that's uh, Umbreon's second kill of the match because the Toxic was set by him. He gets the kill for that. And he goes ahead and goes out into his Rachi here. I die to a U-turn, I die to an Iron Head, I have to switch out. I'm expecting him to actually go for a U-turn again here, so I just switch out to something that can quad resist that, and then scare almost anything on his team out, and that is my Heatran. He actually goes for the Iron Head, which is best case scenario for me, because it does nothing, and it also forces him to switch out next turn, uh, and gives me a free Stealth Rock. So that's what I wanted to do on turn one, was set up a Stealth Rock on his switch, and then switch out the following turn to uh, make him think I'm not Scarfed to surprise him later on at uh, its sweep potentially with Heatran. Uh, of course, I'm expecting this thing with a very, very, uh, <laughs> very, very inappropriate name to Earthquake me, so I switch out into my Earthquake's uh, switch, and that is my Crab Apple here. I take any physical hit on this team. That only does six. That's nothing. Plus, I scare him out here. And I know he's going to switch out. Now, I was thinking about going for Leech Seed just to play the long game, but at this point, I feel comfortable enough that I could just start pushing for game. And at this point, I think with a lot of the switches he's been making, because he's been making a lot of switches, trying to get uh, initiative on his side, trying to get a lot of uh, momentum that he lost those first few turns when I was making a bit of plays here with the Umbreon. Uh, he's been making a lot of switches. He's going to continue to make a lot of switches if this game continues on. So I just decided to go for a spike here. Or I actually decided to go for Leech Seed here, expecting him to stay in and uh, do something, but... <laughs> uh, the following turn is everything I just said. So he switches out here, I go for the Spike, expecting to switch. Um, and then I switch out here into my uh, Heatran, because I know this thing gets Prankster when it Mega Evolves, and I know it gets Will-O-Wisp, 
and I know the Will O Wisp is coming. I want to get my Flash Fire boost, and he Mega Evolves, and he Willows me, and I get my Flash Fire. So now we're just looking at a sweep for Heatran. At this point, I'm Scarfed. I'm faster than everything on his team except for the Jirachi, but Jirachi goes down to a Fire Blast, especially after Rocks and the Spike here, which is actually very crucial for the Licky Licky. Uh, as you can see here, he stays in, and he does not want to take that Fire Blast. Down goes Spoops. I like that name, Spoops. Uh, to our Fire Blast. That's our first kill for Heatran this match. And it will not be the last. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil that for you guys. It's not going to be our last one with Heatran. He goes into his Licky Licky. You see how much damage that takes from the Switch. That's very, very crucial, because if it was just Stealth Rock damage, I don't think it would have taken it out. But thanks to the spike, it puts it within range. Now, I, uh, he makes a switch here into the Jirachi, which was kind of a desperation play on his part because he knew he was about to get swept. So he was hoping maybe he scared me out with the Earthquake uh, potential from the Licky Licky. Maybe he was hoping he outsped me or what have you. But uh, I know I outspeed because I'm Scarfed. I know a Fire Blast kills if it connects. And uh, this Jirachi is going to be a dead Jirachi. So it takes some damage switching in. It doesn't matter. I'm Flash Fire boosted. Fire Blast is one of the strongest fire type moves in the game. Jirachi's weak to it. It's going to go down 100% of the time. So now his only Pokemon that can outspeed me is gone. Heatran he picks up a second KO over the match. Uh, another Stealth Rock switch in for the Mandibuzz. Puts it a little bit above half. Uh, just barely above half. Uh, plus it's toxic. Plus I have Flash Fire boost. Licky Licky after Stealth Rock Spike switch ins is not going to want to take a Fire Blast. It doesn't even want to take one now. So we see him go back into the Licky Licky here. It takes 12 from the Stealth Rocks, 13 from the Spikes. And I just hit it with another Fire Blast and down it goes. That is the third kill of the night for Mr. Heatran here. GPL's Reckoning is living up to his name this week, guys. And his last Pokemon is the Mandibuzz. He switches it in. After Rocks, it goes down to 63%. I know this thing's bulky. But I, I'm plus one with my Fire Blast. It, yeah, this thing's not going to take that. So Mandibuzz goes down. And we end up picking up our first 6-0 of the season on the back of Umbreon and Heatran, guys. We didn't even send out our Scolipede. We didn't even send out our Mega Altaria. Uh, the Porion is out for two turns. Our Chestnut was out for two turns. It was all Umbreon. It was all GPL's Reckoning. They get the MVP for this week, obviously. Four kills for our Heatran. Two kills for our Umbreon. Huge, huge, huge game this week, guys. We were tied for Shattered Simi... We are tied with Shattered Simi Seer and Zephyrexy for second place. All at four and two. After I beat Shattered here and after Zeph lost this week as well, we are sitting alone in second place at five and two. That's five wins in a row after starting 0-2. So we are the hottest team in the league right now. We have a plus seven differential. Plus seven, thanks to the 6-0 sweep. And first place is Professor Chipboard in the Exeter Skitty, sitting at six and one with a plus five differential, I believe, if I remember correctly. So basically what I'm saying is if we win next week and Professor Chipboard loses next week, it doesn't matter what the differential is because their differential is already higher. We will be in first place of the GPL. And that's really saying how far we've come, considering we got swept the first two weeks. We've managed to really put some things together, uh, find our groove here, make a few key transactions to the team, like Umbreon, like Chestnut, who both put in work this week, and really just come together as a team, started beating everybody on our path, and it's not going to stop next week, guys. I'm letting you know right now. Foxy, I'm coming for you. We're going up against Foxy Ice Cubes next week. And his Mega Venusaur is not going to like what I have in store for it. So, if you guys like this battle, because I know I did, please leave a like down below, like I said earlier. Uh, I'm really excited for next week. Make sure you check out next week as well, because this train's going to keep rolling. My name's Shakofina, and I'm out.